in the, in the UK, do you foresee house prices dropping within the next five years? The big thing keeping house prices high, both here and back in Sydney, is the possibility of foreign buyers buying with absolutely no enforcement of the rules against non-residents buying established housing. Um, but fundamentally, the, the driving force behind house, house prices is a combination of two things. Government policy that helps it go up, so help to buy is a, is a classic booster of prices here, but then it has to be fueled by mortgage debt. Since I argue that uh, demand is income out of existing money plus income paid for by new debt, you also have to look at what's that spent on. And conventional economics just looks at money being spent buying goods and services, but of course borrowed money is spent buying goods and services and assets. So there's a relationship between the level of asset prices and the change in, more in, in lending to buy assets. So there's therefore a relationship between the change in asset prices and the acceleration of debt, the change of the change. So you can actually have a downturn in house prices when the demand is predominantly domestic if there's a deceleration in the mortgage debt. So even though it's still growing, if it's growing more slowly, that can be enough to take the wind out of rising prices. Now that appears to be happening in the English market now. I've got to check the data to be sure. So I haven't looked at the mortgage data for a few months. And that could go on for some time, but of course the, the thing which can prevent the house price for continuing is the foreign buying of your property. And you've got plenty of people who want to get money out of hot spots in the rest of the world into a hot market. And the government diving into the rescue of house prices once more because of that political financial complex. Now, what's the, um, the economic effect of allowing speculation to determine the cost of housing? Well, you end, and ultimately end up with the, the, that only working if the level of debt continues to accelerate. If you get to the point where you get a huge level of mortgage debt, the acceleration of mortgage debt can stop. And when it stops, house prices stop rising. When they stop rising, people stop having the urgency about getting into the market, and that causes the mortgage debt rate to decelerate further. So then you can have a downturn and then it can feed on itself. So we saw in Spain, but when that acceleration of mortgage debt stopped, house prices crashed in Spain. The rate of growth of debt turned massively negative. That sucked money out of the economy and it fell into the spiral it's still in with unemployment at 25%. Now that's the real danger. Uh, and Keynes put it beautifully back in the 1930s talking about the same phenomenon. He said, uh, speculation uh, as, as eddies on the flow of normal business probably doesn't do much harm, may even do some good. But when the entire economy gets sucked into a whirlpool of speculation, the end will be ill. If your entire economy is based on speculation, which means it's based on leverage and rising levels of leverage, ultimately you'll have so much debt, private debt, that the economy can't finance itself and the economy collapses. And we really haven't learned that lesson. Europe's falling into deflation pretty much as mm. you predicted. Mm. Um, do you think quantitative easing is, is the solution to the, the problem? It's being touted as such. Quantitative easing actually gives money to banks and in, in England to pension funds and organisations like that. What do they spend the money on? Buying assets. Okay? It inflates the asset market. So it is having an impact, but it's trivial compared to the amount of money being thrown at it. And it's really, um, to me, it's cementing all the errors of the previous era of private debt growth by really feeding the financial sector rather than feeding the real economy. So that could be quite a popular vote winner, I would have thought. It would be a popular vote winner, but of course it would be unpopular with bankers. The financial sector so dominates the minds of politicians that if they oppose something, it's almost certain not to get through right now. But, and it's also, it's so easy to spin that, oh, the government's printing money, you know. Well, the government's supposed to print money. And this, this is part of the, 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 the myth of thinking about the economy like a household, mm. but also the myth of thinking like money, like something you dig out of the ground. There's only a certain amount of it. Now, if we were using gold as money, okay, then that would be true. In fact, the way money is created is, is two ways in the system we're in. Banks can lend more than they get back in repayments, and the government can run a deficit. Now, if I said that it'd be really sensible if the banks got back, gave out less in loans than they got back in repayments every year, people would laugh at me and they'd be right. They'd say, let's have a shrinking money supply. Wouldn't that be good? 
That's actually what Europe's got right now. That's why it's going down. But if I say the government should run a deficit, people think, oh, that's irresponsible. It's fundamentally the governments and the banks are similar institutions in that their role is to create money. Now, if you have the banking sector, as it's happening in, in Europe right now, and it was happening in America for some time, taking in more in repayments than they're making out in loans, the money supply of the economy shrinks. Okay? If the government does the same thing, it shrinks faster. And that's what's happened to Europe. That's why you've got unemployment rates at 25% in Spain and, and Greece. That's why Germany is recording negative growth now, okay, and France. So it's, it's a silly way of thinking about the, the role of the government. So the sensible role say, well, the government is like a bank. And what does a bank do when the economy is travelling well? It lends more than it gets back in repayments. It should lend that for businesses and proper investment rather than speculation, but that should be its role. The same analogy applies to the government. A growing economy should have a government running a deficit. Now, because uh, we don't do that, that's why we're in a slump right now. My idea of QE for the people would be a way of doing two things at once. Have the government running a deficit by financing that as fiscal operation and using it to cancel large amounts of private debt because we need to reduce the private debt burden. That's by far the most important impediment to the economy's success. Something to reduce the level of private debt. And that's what the government should be doing. It's what we should be making, the, allowing the banking sector to do. Instead, the government is sucking money out of the economy or attempting to by trying to run a surplus, while the banks are trying to create more debt for speculation. We've got the worst of both worlds.